Hello, my name is Ailey Milton and I'm going to be discussing the use of non-antibiotic products to prevent and treat urinary tract infections. There are no disclosures relevant to the study and it has been reviewed and approved by the Ethics Committee. Non-antibiotic products, which will be abbreviated to NAPs, are treatments that fall outside of mainstream healthcare. The prevalence of NAPs use in some developed nations varied between 30 and 90% with large-scale surveys suggesting an increasing popularity of NAP use in Europe in recent decades, and studies have demonstrated that patients were using NAP with only limited information about the therapies and their effects. Up to 60% of patients who use NAP did not disclose this to the doctors, with the most cited reason being that their doctors did not ask them. These findings highlight the lack of awareness of NAP usage among healthcare professionals. The primary aim of the study was to elicit women's perception, knowledge and experience of NAPs to prevent and treat urinary tract infections, which will be abbreviated to UTIs. In this qualitative study, we interviewed 24 women, all of whom had at least one experience of a UTI. The women were recruited from three different outpatient settings, as shown here, and online via social media. The one-to-one -one telephone interviews had a semi-structured design to explore the women's perception, knowledge and experiences of NAPs. We analysed the data using Braun and Clark's thematic analysis approach to identify codes and themes. Every participant that was recruited for this phase met the inclusion criteria. These criteria were the, that women were over the age of 18 and were able to comprehend the information provided. No one was excluded based on the exclusion criteria, which were women under the age of 18 and those that were pregnant. From the interviews, we were able to identify nine themes as shown here, and we will go into detail of each. It was shown that all women had tried to self-manage their UTIs using a range of NAPs, which included local application, complementary and herbal medication, as well as changes in behaviour, such as altering their diet to include more herbal teas and increasing their fluid intake to try and, quote, flush it out. Cranberry-based products were shown to be the most known about, with 96%, which equivalents to 22 of the women mentioning cranberry-based products as an alternative therapy. Both cranberry tablets and juice was mentioned, with 83%, aka 19 of the women, mentioning cranberry juice, whereas only 17%, which equivalents to 4 of the women, mentioning cranberry tablets. 48%, which equivalents to 11 of the women, had heard about naps via word of mouth, with only 17%, aka 4 of the women, hearing about them from healthcare professionals. You may notice that the total here is greater than 23, and it's because some of the women used a multitude of sources. The main reasons for trying NAPs were inability to attain an appointment with a healthcare professional, wanting to avoid antibiotic use, thinking it would help when they were desperate. When we analysed the data surrounding the concerns women had when taking NAPs, we were able to pinpoint three codes as shown here. The most common code with 83%, aka 19 of the women, was that they had no concern when taking naps. This was primarily because they perceived them to be, quote, natural, safe, and, quote, worth a try. Despite having no concerns, 70%, aka 16 of the, of the women, were unsure on the dosage they should take. When we analysed the data surrounding the difficulties with dosage, we were able to pinpoint five codes as shown here. 70%, which equates to 16 of the women, attributed the dosage down to individuals' ideas, such as, quote, guesswork, the more the better, and as much as tolerated. 35%, which equates to eight of the women, followed the instructions that came with the product, with 88%, aka seven of them, finding the instructions easy to follow. 9%, which equates to two of the women, used Google slash online support groups, to determine the dose. 22%, which equates to five of the women, did not disclose their use of NAPs to a primary healthcare professional. The majority of the women acquired NAPs from supermarkets. This was not surprising as previously mentioned, 96%, aka 22 of the women, had mentioned cranberry juice as an alternative, which is easily accessible from local supermarkets. Women with their current UTIs, which included 63%, aka 15 of the women, had more knowledge and experiences with NAPs with 75% aka 3 of the women in the social media group sourcing expensive products from non-readily 
available sources such as international suppliers. 78% aka 18 of the women experienced no side effects when taking naps but 39% aka 9 described an unpleasant taste with cranberry juice. While 70% which equates to 16 of the women did not think or were unsure the alternatives were effective with 83% aka 13 of the women subsequently needing antibiotics. However, nine, only 9%, which equates to two of the women, were unwilling to try naps again in the future. With the current situation, we had to rely on telephone instead of face-to-face -face interviews. This permitted us to have a larger number of women involved, as it was more flexible for participants as we were able to work around their schedule and required less time from them. However, it did have an impact on the depth of interviews, as it was more difficult to gain rapport and there was a possibility that participants were distracted with some interviews being interrupted, for example, by children. A significant number of women have tried and will continue to try NAPS as a management option for UTIs, despite a majority of healthcare practitioners not discussing this with them. This remains an appealing option to many women because they may be considered, quote, natural remedies rather than pharmaceutical agents. Although previously tested with varying degrees of statistical significant effects, it means that these remedies for prevention and self-treatment could alleviate symptoms and reduce discomfort for women prone to UTIs. It's important to better articulate the knowledge of complementary and alternative medicines in UTIs, since the strategy, advice and remedies that some women find useful may also be beneficial for others. Overall, this demonstrates a need for further research into use of NAPS in the prevention, treatment and relief of UTI symptoms in women. Thank you very much for listening.